We know he loves the deal, real estate, gambling, casinos, whatever. But his theme song could very well be, I Love a Parade. He was Grand Marshal for the New York Military Academy Parade, marched in the Vietnam Parade. This weekend, he'll be Grand Marshal of the largest parade ever to be held in the United States. The nation's parade on Veterans Day, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. Grand Marshal Donald Trump. Donald? Well, how are you? Oh, great to see you. It's been a little while. Yeah, well, we, we sometimes catch a flight back. Uh, I, right, I saw you right, with your daughter right. one night on a flight back from Florida. That's right, and, and uh, a little while ago, and, and you were saying that you were thinking about doing this crazy CNBC thing. Yeah, I wasn't thing. sure if I was going to do CNBC. Right. I asked you, you advised me, and here we are. I said do it. Anything you do turns out, and boy, did this turn out. <laughs> That's yeah, great. it worked out well. Really a great job. Tell me about being Grand Marshal of a parade. How do you get to do that? Well, it's, a, it's, it's really, for me, a great honor. Uh, I was approached by Mayor Giuliani and Tom Fox and a lot of the folks, and we're going to have, I guess, the biggest parade in the history of New York City, and I think that means the history of the country, and it's going to be on Saturday about 11 o'clock right up Fifth Avenue, and it's a real honor for me. I never served in the Army. I got very lucky in one sense. I got a very high lottery number when the lotteries were being picked around right, the Vietnam yeah. era. So I have to say that I was very lucky. I can't say it's something I wanted to do, I have to be honest. And I've always felt a little bit guilty because I, I was lucky. I've been lucky in a lot of things. So uh, here I am, I'm doing my thing. We did the Vietnam Parade 10 years ago. I think never have people been so nice to me as the veterans because the, the Vietnam Parade, I mean, to this day with I help out United Cancer, this, that, all of the different charities, the veterans always come up and say thanks. Nobody else says thanks, the veterans really? say thanks. So it's just a great honor for me. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people forget. I'm a little worried, not that uh, we should have more wars so we remember these things, but people forget that people had to fight and die to, to make this a great country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think the veterans get enough credit sometimes. Some of the young kids say, what are the old guys out there in uniforms for, you know? Well, it's know. very they're, important. They're fantastic people, and the pride and the, uh, the pride you'll see on Saturday will be unbelievable. Yeah. You mentioned Mayor Giuliani. How's he doing in New York? Well, I think he's doing very well. I have to say New York City is uh, hotter, I believe, than it's been really since the 80s but during the 80s. Is it a good time to buy in New York? I think it's a good time to buy but I'll tell you what prices are going up and they're going up fast. If you would have said this to me three years ago it was like devastation. Uh, I had a building up and if somebody went and looked at the building it was a major event. They didn't have to buy, <laughs> they just had to walk by it. Um, we're doing a job now with General Electric and Galbraith and a group that is just going to be I think the most successful job we've ever done. It's uh, right at number one Central Park West, the old Paramount building. Right. And that's coming down, and we're building Trump International Hotel and Tower. I think in the history of condos, I don't believe there's ever been anything quite like this in terms of what we're selling and how fast that's we're right, selling. That's right, at Columbus Circle there? That's right, at Columbus Circle. Now, when that Paramount building was up, they used to say that swayed and it leaked. Did. And did it was actually very safe. It was called a flex building. Some really? brilliant engineer said, you know, this is a very safe building. Let it I was move. up there meeting with Barry Diller once when he was at Paramount, and the building was going mm -hmm. like it's, this. Uh, it, was, it was a terrible building and a terrible design and a great location. And essentially, we've ripped it down and we've yeah, rebuilt. Yeah, it looked like you went all the way down. Yeah, we went right down into the foundations. We're going to end up having the sti really the stiffest building, residential building in New York. And it's an incredible building and an incredible location. But New York is really back and back. <clears throat> so is Donald Trump. You went through some tough times. Uh, but I'll tell you something. I saw you... I forget. I, well, I saw you. I, I've known you a long time, and I saw you at your peak. I also saw you during that, those bad times. And you know what always impressed me? You were no different. Well, thank you. That's a good compliment. You were compliment. no different. That's a good compliment. You can't take it too seriously. I mean, I know you're going to be up. I'll be up. I'll be down. I'll be... You can't really. Guys like us, yeah, just I mean, keep coming. you just keep coming. That's all you can do. And yeah, sometimes it's not easy. They say, come on out to dinner, and you have 400 people, and they're looking and staring, and they're saying, I wonder how he's taking adversity. But you learn a lot about yourself, and you learn a lot about other people. You learn about loyalty. Uh, yeah. I learned a lot about loyalty. I had people that I would have bet the ranch on, and they were not as loyal as they should have been. Right. And I had people that I wouldn't have, and they turned out to be, I mean, unbelievable. Really Isn't that positive. interesting? Yeah. So you just can't tell. It's not color. It's not race. It's not religion. It's not anything, Roger. You just can't tell. Yeah, but it's amazing how, who's there learn, for you and yeah, who isn't. isn't it? You learn a lot. It's, yeah. uh, it's a, you know, in, well, in one of my books, I wrote... You wrote I'd Art love of the to Deal go and then Art uh, of the Deal and Surviving at the Top. Surviving at the Top. Yeah. And I liked writing Art of the Deal better, but they were both really, I think they were good books and they were both number one bestsellers. I said, I'd like to suffer a really bad financial reversal for a short period of time just to see who's loyal. <laughs> and I never will say that again because I don't want to have to do it because it's tough work. I mean, yeah. getting out of that stuff is, uh, it's like a web. But You went through you a tough a time. How many, a couple of years, a few years? Yeah, I went through probably two and a half, three years of really tough time, and now we're having the best year we've ever had. This Did you ever doubt yourself during that time? Well, I, I don't think I had time. 
almost. I mean, you know, you don't want to sound overly cocky, and I guess most people would say, how could that be possible? But I really didn't. I always feel if I have my health, if you're healthy and strong, you know, you just do it. But I did go through some tough times, and, um, you know, looking back, I'm glad I did. All right. It's really been a great experience. Did it change you at all? I don't think so. I think if you like nice apartments and if you like <laughs> nice cars, you're still going to like them. I don't yeah. think it changed, but I think you learned, and if you didn't learn, you're a fool. You learn through adversity. You learn through good times, I guess. But you what, really learn through adversity. What, you're, you're unique um, on the American landscape. I mean, there's only one Donald Trump. What happened in your background, your family, your genes, your parents? Something, uh, parents are out there looking and say, how can I get my kid to have that attitude of never say die, go out there and win, succeed, at any, you know? Well, you, you know, I'm, I'm a fighter, and you're a fighter, and we're all fighters. You wouldn't have built CNBC. I mean, I've yeah. seen what you did. And, and the, the story yeah. that you're telling about the airplane is true. I mean, that was a story that you were just thinking about doing, this crazy CNBC that everybody was saying, forget it, it's never going to work. And it's, it's really turned out. It's one of the things I really watch a lot and, like, all the time. Um, you just have to fight. You just have to be there. And, you know, you mentioned the word gene. I'm a big believer in genes. Genes are luck. I mean, if you, you're lucky to get the right parents with the right genes. But if Jack Nicklaus, great golfer, never played golf, and at 50 years old, he picked up a golf club for the first time, within a year, he's going to be club champion of any club practically in the country. I mean, that's just... Because it's just there. It's just got a natural ability for, you know, something. And, and the same with other people. So genes are very important. There's no question about it. What is your talent? What is, I mean, if you had to go in on a job application and they said, Donald Trump, and they put down, what's your greatest skill? What's your greatest talent? I sort of think I can visualize what people want in maybe an aesthetic way and then get it done. I think I have a financial talent, but I really like the financial or have the financial to get something done. It's a little bit of my mosaic. It's, it's not about the money. I don't think it's about the money, and the money comes because what I build is something that people like. In my case, for the most part, I mean, I do other business kinds of things, but for the most part, I build, and people like what I do. That's why the Trump International is turning out to be such a success. That's why Trump Tower, that's why the, the Taj Mahal is, is setting every record in Atlantic City. Tell me what's going on in Atlantic City right now. You went through this thing with Merv at one point, right. and right. everybody thought, gee, maybe it didn't work out, and then turned out you came out pretty darn well. I came out good, and Merv's a really good guy. and, yeah. and uh, I think Merv is doing well with resorts, to be honest right. with you, and I, I hope so, and he's done a nice job. He's taken a building and made it very nice. I was over there the other night. Uh, I saw Kathy Lee and Regis do a job <laughs> over at, at Merv's place, and, and they've done a nice job. Um, no, it really worked out great for me. The Taj Mahal, which was part of that whole right. deal, has set every record in Atlantic City. It's set every record just about in the country. I mean, we're doing numbers that are bigger than just about anything in the country, including Las Vegas. and. Everyone's talking about the Trump Taj Mahal. It's probably the most successful casino now in the United States. Vegas went to a kind of family orientation. Is that going to be what happens in Atlantic City eventually, or well, is it... Uh... Well, Vegas went there, but it didn't work. I mean, you know, to be totally honest, it did not work. It's not working. Uh, they talk it, and it hasn't worked. And Vegas is sort of a great place, and I like it, and we'll be there. But Atlantic City is the one that now is setting all the records. You know, Atlantic City does more business in 12 casinos than the entire Las Vegas Strip, which is an amazing statement. Wow. But, and few people know that, and they're starting to find out. And right now, if you look at Wall Street, the real darling of Wall Street is Atlantic City. Uh, Atlantic City is doing more business than the entire Las Vegas Strip by a considerable margin. So Atlantic City right now is the hot venue. And that makes me feel good, because if you remember three years ago, people were saying, Donald, you have your cards in Atlantic City and all, you know, like you're some kind of a jerk. <laughs> uh, it's turned out to be. It's turned out to be like uh, like CNBC. I, I saw uh, in the paper this morning that Riverboat Rudy. They're going to put casinos on boats running around the island well, of Manhattan yeah, or something. Is that going to hurt Atlantic City? Long, it, perhaps. I mean, it's got a long way to go. I think. Uh, you know, it's a funny thing when Foxwoods opened and another mm -hmm. one opened. Uh, right. Atlantic City's way up from last year, way up from the year before. It's having the best year it's ever had. And I don't say it's great for the country, but, you know, more and more you're seeing this. I, I will say this. I think the greatest crime wave in this country is going to be caused by the Indian gaming. I think it's totally out of control. I don't think it's properly supervised. The politicians are doing a tremendous disservice to what's going on. I mean, the, the great, great crime wave, the Al Capone crime wave of this of this time, of this generation, is going to be caused, in my opinion, by what's happening on the Indian reservations with respect to what I consider to be unsupervised gaming. Got to take a break here. We'll be right back with Donald Trump. Uh, if you have a question, you can give us a call, 1-800-988-TALK. If you're a bozo, don't call. We're going to take serious questions. Uh, but if you have a good question for us, give us a call. We'll be right back.
nice. That's a nice montage. You know, I, I always worry about public figures in today's world. There are crazy people out there. I mean, you have to have security all the time, don't you? It's true. It's right. a little bit rough. It, it is. is a little bit rough. There's no question. A lot of crazies. A lot yeah. of good people, but there are a lot of crazies. You must get strange mail. Mm -hmm. You get, I mean, everybody asking you for money, asking you for uh, uh, things. I mean, it's, it's tough. I get it? some very strange letters. I mean, you, you actually say, where do these people come from? And I'm not talking <laughs> about just asking for money because right. I can understand that somebody's sure. got problems. And, right. But some of the things that you read in letters, you really say, where are these people from? You wouldn't mm -hmm. believe it. I mean, yeah. But you get it. But it's, no, I, it's, I, yeah, it's I, just terrible. I, I, get, I get about one or two a week here at the network. They're pretty yeah. strange. But uh, let me go back for a second. You said the 90s are. Do, have you changed your business style in the 90s? Is it as good as the 80s? I, I think this is the best year I've ever had in business. I don't think we've ever done better as a company than I've done this year. But I will say that. Um, you know, I don't think people change that much. I think it sounds great. Oh, gee, you know, we had a depression. Look, we had a stupid tax law that was passed by a bunch of very dumb politicians in Washington. They passed the dumbest tax law, the 1986 law, and it destroyed banks, real estate, everything in one fell swoop. And I'll tell you what, there aren't that many of us around. I mean, I have a lot of friends that are good people, not dishonest people, not bad people, and frankly, a lot of friends that are bankers that are good people. And they got wiped out by, in order to save $5 billion, you end up destroying the entire United States economy for a period of three or four years. You know what happened. Yeah. It was disgusting. But led by a Senator Bradley and a couple of other people. I mean, just mm -hmm. terrible what went on. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you change your practice that much. I don't think you change your way that much. I think it sounds great. I mean, I should say, oh, yeah, sure, I learned here and I did that. Yeah, right. The bottom line, you're born a certain way, you go do your thing, and experience is a wonderful thing, and you certainly learn from experience, but I don't think you change that much. Is it too simplistic to say by buy something and charge more for it and sell it to somebody I mean that that's how yeah. you make money yeah well it, it sounds great but it doesn't always work that way and you know they talk about the great 80s and now they're talking about the great times that we're in now because we are really in very strong times I see that if it continues to go this way we're really going to be a very very productive place again very soon there's a lot of positive feeling and I really think a lot of things are happening with the cutting of the red tape with sending things back into the states where at least it's a smaller group of people controlling a smaller amount of money. A lot of positive things happening. Yeah. Uh, we've got a call on the line from California. Ann? Ann, you're on with Donald Trump. Go ahead, Ann. Hello? Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. I'm hello, from Ann. Pennsylvania. Oh. That's a nice place also. <laughs> well, that is nice. <laughs> hello. Hello, uh, Mr. Trump. How are you? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to know why you uh, decided to put your stock on the, on the uh, stock market trading on your initials, DJT. Right. And I own 50 shares of your stock, and I want to know how you thought it was going to do. Well, I think you're happy if you own it because it's gone up. Yeah, it's gone up three happy. points just to, since I've owned it. Right. Good. Well, it's, it's been one of the hotter gaming stocks, as I understand it, as of today. Uh, well, I just put it, I used the DJT because you have to pick something, and I figured DJT, from my standpoint, is okay. <laughs> Seems and, all right to you, huh? And it's a wonderful company. <laughs> it's uh, doing very well, and I think you're going to see some very pleasant surprises over the coming months. Uh, when you, uh, do you get heat for putting your name on things? Do people kid you about that? Because it makes, it makes, it adds to the value. Then. It adds to the value. You know, it, it's funny. I, the first time I did it was Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue, right. Fifty Seven. It's the right. most successful condominium ever built in this country by far, maybe anywhere. But right. I mean, no building has ever sold like that and continues to. And so mm -hmm. you have Trump Tower. Then I said, you know, I better do it again and again. The first time it was ego. It's really business. It just creates value. And I don't know what it is. You'll have to explain it to me. But they sell. I mean, Trump International is such a hot building. So I don't want to change the formula. Let me ask you, I've been with you at times, I've seen you in public where uh, rich guys are often not well-liked guys. But what's interesting to me is the average, the guy on the street, the cab drivers, the, uh, the guys working on the road crews, they all go, hey, Donald, how's it going? Hey, they, it's almost like they feel very comfortable with you, like you're one of them. And it's, I've never quite figured out how you bridge that. The people that don't like me are the rich people, okay? It's, right. it's a funny thing. I mean, it's they right. can't stand me. I mean, I have friends, and I have not only friends, I have enemies, <laughs> jerks. <laughs> they work, they hurt people, they this, they that, yeah. and then they call up, can you help me get a, a reservation yeah. at a restaurant, okay? I say, what's the purpose of being rich if you can't get a table at a restaurant? The people that like me are the people that you're talking about. Yeah. The rich people do not like Donald Trump. Isn't that amazing? Well, I sort of love it. <laughs> let's, let's go to politics for a second. Got right. a couple minutes in this segment because you're very opinionated on politics. 
if the economy is this good, that's a pretty good sign for Bill Clinton, isn't it? It is. I, I will say it is a good sign, and I think the economy is even better than people are thinking. I think the economy is very strong. Uh, New York is really strong, and coming, I, I think you're going to see some fantastic things coming out of New York very soon. So that's a good thing for Clinton. Um, but Who do you like on the Republican side? How do you handicap? Well, I'm okay. supporting Dole. Uh, I'm a good supporter and a big supporter of Bob Dole. I think he's a great guy. I think he's uh, supported by uh, a man that is, I used to call him the most underrated politician in the United States, Senator Alphonse. He's a lovely man. He's a wonderful man. He gets killed by the media. I know you like him. but oh, I, I like him because I helped him get elected. I mean, I'm the guy who did his mother ad, so. He is one of the finest guys and yeah. one of the most underrated. Now, I guess he's no longer underrated because he's destroyed everything that was in his path. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you, he's helped a lot of people. I called him about some woman who was having a real problem, a woman that I knew having a problem getting a check from the government, and Al got on the phone, made it happen. Alfred, I mean, in, he's in, terrific. in, in uh, 30 seconds, he, he made it He's happen. a terrific guy, and he's a great asset for New York. Okay, we've got to take another break here. Uh, Marla's here, I hear. Can we see? She is indeed. Uh, she is. Marla's going to come Okay, you want to see? <laughs> she is a she is a wonderful person. We want we've tried to hire her at this network. We would like to hire her. American success. We're back talking with uh, one of the most famous men in the country, and uh, for good reason. He's also a really nice guy, and he does an awful lot for other people that doesn't get reported in the press. The press sometimes treats you good, sometimes they, sometimes they love to hate you, sometimes they love you, sometimes they hate you. What, well, what they're it? very uneven. Uh, some are very good, but I've met some of the most dishonest people I've ever met are in the press. I mean, they are literally some of the most dishonest, despicable people. And, you know, when you see the public hates the press so much, mm -hmm. the public understands. Some of the most truly dishonest, and I mean people, when you tell them something, they know exactly what they should be writing, and they write exactly the opposite for the sake of the story. They're truly despicable people in many cases. In some cases, they're very nice. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Now, there's somebody here who gets good press, unlike you and me. <laughs> she gets much better. She gets good press. Marla gets good press all the time. People, you know, you're just one of the most likable people. Oh, thank you. Really? Well, we have to walk the fine line in the press always, I think. Are you worried that he's going to rub off on you and they're going to start <laughs> hitting you, too? I mean, I think we um, we sort of have a nice balance between yeah. us. We kind of moderate each other and make sure we're... Tell me about Mar-a-Lago. Has the thing gone through to make that a condiment? Yeah, it's, it's really been great. It's it's a fabulous house. It's, it's the greatest house in the United States, easily by far, by any account. And it's a great private social club right now and it's something we're very proud of I mean it's it's really taken shape all well, of there's a there's a shot of it there yeah. all of your friends so now to join that private club it costs what 75 grand 75, a year Seventy-five thousand dollars to join and you know during the bad times I'm sitting here with this house that cost a fortune to maintain three million dollars a year and I'm saying is this ridiculous and I started this process to get it into sort of an income producing thing but I really did it to save Mar-a-Lago because ultimately, how many jerks are like Donald Trump that are going to spend this kind of money? To, you, it's truly one of the great landmarks in the country. What did it cost to keep that up? About just as $3 million dollars a year. Just to run it? Just, just to, to run keep it. it up. And you know what? $3 million is a lot of money, but in bad times, it's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'll probably have bad times again someday. I want to make sure that this little sucker is taken care of. So it's really, uh, it, it's just going to be a great thing and it's very, very successful. Do you spend much time down there? Do you go down a lot? I adore it. The, the amazing thing about Mar-a-Lago is, with all of its grandeur, it's very warm, and yeah. uh, you really have a good feeling when, when you walk into the home. Tell me what's cooking with your career. I know I saw you in a show. What show were you in? The Broadway show? Will Rogers. Will Rogers, Will, yeah. Will Rogers. yeah, you were great. Yeah, it's a lot just of fun. Great. Worked on a film, just finished a Joel Silver movie called yes. Executive Decision for Warner Brothers. Do you do you want to do that full time? How can you with this guy? He travels all the time. You're I have three full time careers. It's the husband, the baby, and, and then my career. It's amazing. Tell me about the baby. Tell me about the baby. Everybody thinks their kids are cutest, but I've seen yours. Yours is pretty cute. She's pretty cute. Yeah. She's amazing. Tommy Toon gave her a pair of tap dancing shoes when she was born and they fit her now and she has been going around the kitchen floor tapping all day long. You're kidding. She already stuffle, uh, shuffles and ball changes. Yeah. She's, she's amazing. She's got a yeah. lot of natural natural talent. How's she daddy just loves entertaining. I think he's got a new another little mm -hmm. ba uh, another daddy's girl in his I have, hands. I have four just great children. And, and I saw you great. with your daughter once. You were trying to help her with her homework. I must say she probably failed that class. I saw I was, <laughs> you were sitting there, and I could tell you were ready. Uh, she was, 
like way ahead of you that's on some right, of these arithmetic right. problems. Yeah, right? It's right. tougher than we think. It's tougher than we think. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> they ask me questions, and I haven't been out of school that long, but it's... Uh, you know what tough. impressed me about that, though? You were so patient with her. You took, you know, a lot of parents don't take time with kids. I think that more than anything else, if you give them some time mm -hmm. and give them some focus, and I was very impressed with the fact that you, you really took time and, and stayed focused on what she wanted to stay focused on. That impressed me. Mm -hmm. Much as other things have impressed me that you've done in your life, uh, watching you play with that kid for an hour uh, was very yeah. impressive. Y Ivanka's a special girl. She's my little, uh, my little daughter, and she's a very special girl. And she's out there, and she's focused, and she's doing a good job. Yeah. Would you ever run for politics, or would you worry about them going after your life? I mean, messing up your life, messing up you too. Would you, how would you feel if he went into politics? I think, basically, he, he's a man who makes his own decisions. I can just give my opinions here and there. And, um, but in the end, I'm very flexible with, with his choices. And I think he would do terrific. You know, there's a certain dishonesty, unfortunately, that you need for running for office. Now, it's an unfortunate thing, but you would, have, you would know this perhaps better than anybody in the world, right? Um, I've coached a few. I'm a pretty straight guy, and I'm not sure that somebody that really calls it like it is and says this is what you have to do, I'm not sure that kind of a guy gets elected. Maybe so, maybe not. Everybody wants me to do it. They all want me to run, run. But, you know, it's like I took a very hard stand on Japan. I, took, I, I couldn't believe this last auto deal as an example. Here we are. We're sitting there. It's restricted in Japan. Everything's restricted, restricted, restricted. We're sitting. They can't come in. And all of a sudden, this country falls. We do the old fold now. I've never seen it. That isn't the way the press reported it. Well, they, no, they, the press reported it that we had a deal. No. And then all of a sudden, it turned out that the deal turned out that it was not a good deal for us. And we had all the cards. I mean, it's not like we didn't have the cards. It's like, keep your cars out of here until you open up. That's all. Keep your cars out. And then you, it, the first hour was like, oh, we made this wonderful deal. After about 15 seconds after that, people realized we got duped. I just don't understand it. What's so, wrong with us? I mean, I guess they said, well, this would hurt American car dealers. You know, what's wrong with us? I don't know. They're afraid politically to make a little bit of a tough stand. That wasn't even a tough one. That was a no-brainer. You would have had the Japanese cars out for 19 and a half seconds, and you would have won every single point. It's the most incredible failure in negotiation that I've seen. But it happens all the time. I just don't understand it. So I would take a much harder stand. I'd take a much more difficult stand, I would say make a couple of enemies. I think I'd make a lot of friends, ultimately. Uh, but I'm not sure that type of person is really electable. If the United States government took a firmer stand with foreign countries, would we be better off, or are we so much now a part of the nation of, the community of nations, that we can't really afford to offend anybody? I think we'd be better off, and I think we'd be far more respected. I think the Japanese would respect us far more than they do. I don't think they have any respect for us, and they shouldn't have any respect for us, because we are idiots when it comes to what's happening. I mean, look look at dealing with Japan. I mean, just take a look at what's going on. I mean, they make hundreds of billions of dollars a year, and we lose money in deficits, and nothing happens. And they say, no, the Japanese are learning, and they're starting to open up. In the meantime, every second goes by, we're losing. I, I just think that people would have far greater respect for this country if we took a much tougher stand. It's, it's really quite pathetic. Yeah, I, I, I sort of agree with you. How's married life? How's it going, you two? Go all right? Very good. Is it? Really very it's tough, good. though. I mean, it's tough. Married life's tough, yeah. isn't it? Well, it could be tough. But I mean, this has been very good. And, and, and I would say, actually, this has been very easy in many respects. Really? Yeah, very easy. How do you, do you have any meat and health food? You look so good. What are oh, you doing? Because I know you. you're oh, sort of uh, into the health food, aren't you? I try, but. Mm -hmm. What do you eat? I eat a lot. I eat no, a lot of food. you don't eat a lot. I just, you know what? I don't, I just don't eat. A lot of cheese, I don't eat a lot of no sugar, cheese and that food. makes a big cheese difference. See, so you and I like the same Yeah, food, okay? cheeseburgers and... Uh, as many as we can have. That's right. You, <laughs> I, I, we had dinner one night in a French restaurant. I know you probably have to go out to these fancy dinners all the time. If it's just you guys, where do you go eat? What, what would you go well, just for fun? Well, there's so many great restaurants. One of the great things about New York is the restaurants. That's I mean, true. We have so many, you just can't name them. Le Cirque is so wonderful. And, I mean, I, I don't want to go through too many because I'm just going to get myself into trouble. trouble. You, you didn't mention okay. my didn't restaurant. Mention what? But, uh, you know, just so many great restaurants. It's yeah. one of the great assets of New York. At what, home, of course. What do you What do you eat at home? I make a lot of pasta, a lot of do roasted really? organic chicken. Yeah. And uh, that keeps them happy. Like linguine and clams. Yeah. Well, I like the wrong food, but you like the wrong no, food. No, I, I, you know, listen, no, I mean, this is, I used to be heavy. I sneak what? in vegetables every now and then, usually. <laughs> 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 
what do you guys do on a night off? You got to go out to these dinners. You got to get dressed up all the time. What do you do on a night off? Just go to a movie or something? What do you do? Marla, sometimes what do you we do? go. Sometimes we go to the movies. A lot of times we just stay in, and then I play with Tiffany, and Donald makes phone calls, and <laughs> I cook dinner, and he makes a few more phone How calls. How do you feel about her being a star? This is one of the most beautiful women in the world. She's oh, really done a good job. I mean, she came into a situation that was very hot. And, you know, it's the gene thing we were talking about. You can do it or you can't do it. Very few people right. could have handled it so well. And she's, she's not only nice, she's uh, been very loyal. You know, I always tell the story about walking down Fifth Avenue and, and seeing this poor man. And I was in the worst of times. This was the worst That's of times. That's when you were not only broke, you owed a lot of money, right? Owed? How about I was, like, minus $1 billion, okay? And You're I, kidding. And I've told this story, but there's a man on the corner, a beggar. And I say, see that man? He's worth $900 million more than me. And she said, what do you mean? He's not worth $900 million. I said, no, let's assume he's worth nothing. I'm worth minus $900 million. <laughs> and you know, she's like, hey, I, I, I want out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't do the old sayonara, so that was, yeah. that was very good. But, but she's been very loyal, and she's really done a good job. And she's a hell of an actress. Yes, she is. You're doing a great job. Nice to have you Thank on. You nice to see you. Me. Donald, Thank you, my great friend. to see you. See you soon. Okay. All right. Thanks for stopping by, folks. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. You look great. All right. He'll be Grand Marshal in the nation's parade on Veterans Day. And uh, are you going to that parade? I'll be there. You'll be there? It's waving. Okay. I always wanted to get in one of those parades so I could go. <laughs> I could. Okay. Coming up, the man who President Clinton recently reached out and touched, author, columnist Ben Wattenberg. Stay with us.